I guess I can start. Thanks for the intro. Uh, so my name is Bernd. I'm, uh, I'm working for a company called uh, NIME that is maintaining an open source product called NIME Analytics Platform. And um, this is the agenda that I want to demonstrate uh, or go through. So a quick introduction of uh, what the platform is and uh, what the company is and what we do and how we uh, kind of pay our salaries, um, make an introduction to the big data extensions. As I learned, there's a lot of interest around big data and uh, Spark, etc. cetera. Um, so, um, and then talk briefly through an example where we um, analyze some data set, some energy metadata, um, meter forecasting data set, and then go through various steps like uh, simple data acquisition, reading data from a big data store, uh, doing pre-processing, and then doing a bit more advanced stuff that is beyond uh, simple MLlib and Spark functionality and where really NIME uh, starts to shine. Um, quick intro on the company. Um, so the company was founded in 2008. Uh, we are based in Zurich, but also of offices in, uh, in Germany and at the West Coast. Um, we are the maintainer of the open source platform, NIME Analytics platform, and that's uh, sort of a uh, yeah, a visual platform to assemble what we call then a NIME workflow, and that has a lot of functionality around um, data loading, processing, um, a nice analytical um, functionality. Um, it's very powerful in terms of integrating different uh, data sources, so you can read all sorts of different data sources, but you can also integrate with a lot of uh, tools uh, most notably also nicely with R and Python. Um, okay, um, there were also commercial extensions available from our company that, um, that kind of uh, amend the, the functionality, functionality around the open source uh, piece and that make your life easier once you start to take NIME into production and want to, let's say, automate stuff or you have all these security and uh, authentication issues, etc. But I'm not going to uh, talk about th uh, the letter that much. I want to uh, get a quick intro on the uh, analytics platform. This is a screenshot of, of this. And the whole idea is to um, create what you see here, these different workflows. And some of these um, workflows, they are, OK, these workflows consist of nodes. And those nodes also have views attached. And they allow you to visualize your data, and then there is also something like brushing going on, so you can kind of visually explore your data set. Um, a bit more on terminology, so these nodes perform certain tasks. Um, most of these nodes uh, are super, super simple, so they do very simple things, and the real beauty and the real powerful uh, functionality, com functionality comes in once you create these uh, workflows. So a node can have... Um, multiple or no input at all. That's, that's the thing that you see here on the left. Um, and that can have multiple outputs. And there are very simple things like reading a file, um, doing a data normalization, building a decision tree, or in this case, partition your data set into, um, let's say, a training and a holdout set. Uh, so you have one input and one, uh, two outputs. Each of these nodes also has a status, uh, a traffic light, um, attached that tell you what the status of that node is. And then you take all these simple modules, all these simple nodes, and put together these uh, um, workflows. And they can be simple like, like this one here, where you have read your file, uh, do some very, very simple pre-processing. Then you build um, a model, and you do some uh, possibly prediction on the holdout side. You can also dump your model somewhere else and then use that later on. You can also do some visualization, scoring of your data, etc. You can put loops around that and do ensemble learning, cross-validation, feature selection, and it's all visual, so uh, no coding required um, unless you do really weird things. Um, here a bit more um, slightly larger workflow, um, categorized into different categories like data I.O., the pre-processing, the transformation part, um, analysis and data mining, visualization and deployment. And then there are different, very many different extensions available. Again, these nodes are relatively um, 
relatively simple in terms of functionality, but once you put these workflows together, that's quite powerful. Um, data reading is like usual flat files, databases, big data storage, like um, Hive in the end is also just um, um, the database. Um, then transformation. This is something where NIME is very powerful in to get the data into the right shape. Um, and uh, yeah, and then uh, analytics, we have the usual suspects that you would expect in such a platform. So the usual algorithms, if you want to go cutting or bleeding edge, then you would reach out to other tools that are also integrated, such as R or Python, um, or write it yourself. So there's also an API that allows you to um, extend that API. There are also modules available to doing text uh, analysis, uh, network mining, there's an image mining extension, so overall uh, it's, here it's written a thousand nodes. If you add community nodes, or so nodes contributed by others, then it's more than 2,000 nodes. Um, we also have a nice integration with R and Python, um, I would claim, so you have a node, the, the workflow here at the bottom shows you again this paradigm of partition your data and do some learning and prediction, etc. So there's something called a Python learner, so that's a generic Python integration where you have your scripting editor and then you type up your Python code and then you um, f pass out the model. Also, um, <coughs> down here you see an, uh, a node that is called rview. Uh, so you would write some script in R and then have, for instance, some um, plot generated using ggplot. And this is all in the same framework. Um, I should also briefly mention these different types of uh, ports that you have in here. So there is a, let's say, a native NIME table port. Those are these uh, black uh, triangles here. So there's a data list uh, locally and you do all your processing. There are different types of ports. Here, for instance, at the output of the Python learner, you have a Python model. And there are different, let's say there are a do dozen different types of ports available in NIME that uh, represent, for instance, a predictive model, a database query, an image, uh, a network, etc. Uh, not too many, but um, still quite um, quite a number. Okay, um, the uh, NIME is used kind of horizontally across industry. Everyone who is interested in uh, analytics, advanced analytics, um, or often also just uh, pre-processing. Uh, is, is free to use uh, NIME. Also some name dropping here in terms of customers. I didn't put AXA and L'Oreal on it, but we also have those as, as customers. Uh, we have a good, very good footprint in the pharma space, even though we don't have any chemists really in the, in the group, um, that they use NIME in a worldwide deployment. Uh, IoT is very hot, so they have a good collaboration with Siemens and Bosch going on. Activision is in-game analytics, so these uh, first shooter games um, like Call of Duty, they use it to, they use NIME to track user behavior in, in, in those games. Uh, telcos, retail, Procter & Gamble, Amazon is a customer of ours. Uh, we are based in Switzerland, so in Switzerland there are some banks, so we also have banks as customers, etc. So. Uh, uh, yeah, and then of course I can claim that we are good, but also we are recognized as uh, by others to be, let's say, fairly fairly high standard. Uh, Gartner named us a couple years ago a cool vendor in the area of uh, business intelligence and uh, analytics, and then they started to have these metric quadrants on advanced analytics, and there. In the last three years, we were named a leader in the advanced analytics quadrant, along with uh, other, so typical competition is some something like uh, ZAS or IBM, so that's SPSS uh, modeler. That's where we are. Um, you find a lot of information and also the product. Again, the product is open source and uh, free to to use it, you find that online. There's also an ebook available um, that is that we usually put out for like 20 euros. Uh, there's a free code where you can just download the ebook. I'll have that slide later on uh, once again. So there's nice resources. You have a forum where you can ask questions. It's moderated and uh, quite helpful. 
Okay. Um, now this is all the, let's say, the, the, the stuff that works on your, your machine. Let's now look a bit at our um, offering in terms of Hadoop integration and how you do this uh, and how you can scale out. And there we have uh, really two offerings. Those are, by the way, uh, commercial offerings that pay my salary. Um, there, was, there are the big data connectors that allow you to connect to big data sources like Hive, Impala, uh, Vertica, etc. Um, um, and then there's also what we call the, the Spark executor. So there's a set of nodes that allow you to run um, uh, Spark jobs. We are partnering with the usual suspect in the space, that's uh, Cloudera. Hortonworks uh, map R. Um, now let's look at uh, one of those um, examples here. So this is an, an workflow that does in database processing. So what you use NIME for is to visually assemble the stuff that you want to use, that you want to do in your database without doing it in uh, locally. And then you have different, uh, here they are called big data connectors, but it could be any database that's that's uh, supporting uh, JDBC. And then you have your graph where you assemble your, let's say your SQL query. So you have nodes that are called, for instance, database row filter, so that would be the selection, column filter as a projection, you have the grouping, the sorting, the joining, so the, let's say the uh, usual SQL statements. You can also do enter SQL uh, on your own and all these nodes do. Once you execute them, so if you run them, it's just to compile a small SQL query that, that is then handed off to the database and that does then uh, give you the data. And then here in the end, note this note, it's called database connection table reader, will take the SQL statement or this prepared SQL statement and get the data into, into NIME. So we'll fetch the and execute the SQL statement. Um, that is usually done after you've done all the aggregation and pre-processing that you can do in the database. Um, this was for reading, then there are also the nodes for writing and updating, etc. so that's what you would expect. Um, integration with stuff like HDFS or uh, writing to Impala is slightly more complicated, but there are also solutions around that, so where you have to get your data onto the remote side and then update that into um, into Hive. Okay, and now let's look a bit at machine learning in Hadoop and how we do this with, uh, with Spark, and then maybe I can also briefly show in a demo um, how this can be combined in, in a NIME workflow. Um, I don't think I need to motivate Spark a lot. Uh, scalable machine learning library, or at least MLlib is uh, the machine learning library in, in Spark. Runs in Hadoop, it's made for scale, and they have, they have not a v wide variety of um, algorithms for, uh, for analytics, but they have the, the ones uh, that at least scale nicely. So for classification, they have something like decision tree, naive base, et cetera, um, and we have nodes that um, that make that type of functionality available in, in the NIME Analytics platform. Um, here's an, a small example how this looks like. Note again that these different nodes have now different port types. So this is none of these ports, this is uh, um, rect and all this, this is small triangle, except for the, for the test data here. So this is data that lives locally, but the rest is all done on the remote side in, in, in your big data database. Uh, so you have a node that's called an Hive connector, just to kind of do all the security and the login, etc. cetera. Um, then you do some pre-processing. These gray nodes, by the way, are meta nodes. So if you have a very large workflow, you can kind of clean it up select a set of nodes and then combine them and uh, snap them into a single, what we then call a meta node. Um, once you've done all the pre-processing, you do some conversion into a Spark um, a data frame, and then you can, can run MLlib algorithms on it, such as uh, Spark k-means or the um, decision tree, etc. And what comes out of it is, in this case, so there's a data frame coming in, or we are still using on uh, RDDs. Um, there's an RDD coming out that has sort of the cluster assignment and a model that represents your, your clustering um, that you can then use also. And this is very analogous to the, uh, to the nodes that you also find in the, uh, 
um, in the, let's say, in the main application, where you also have a k-means algorithm and something like a cluster assigner. And it's all visual, so you do not code anything, but you just enter the parameters and run. So it's a native MLlib algorithm. So those are the nodes that uh, do the conversion to and from, uh, from Spark. Once you execute it, the kind of the, the algorithm is sent to the data, and it's not happening locally. Um, uh, another one is uh, mass learning fast event prediction. Um, so you have the, the, the top part here of the workflow is you're building your model, in this case a, a k-means model. You convert this into PMML. So PMML is, is quasi standard for predictive models, predictive model markup language. Um, that is then uh, compiled into some native Java code and that you can then, for instance, uh, upload into your database as a user-defined function. Um, or you run this here in, in, the, in the bottom part of the workflow. This can be then, for instance, a, a REST interface, an API call. Mass prediction on the same, on the other hand, is uh, the top part again is learning a model, and this is now done all in, in let's say, in native NIME. So you have your data locally, and then you can do, um, let's say, advanced analytics, whatever that uh, exactly means. Uh, but in NIME, you, you are able to do more advanced stuff than you can do in Spark. So for instance, you can, do adva you can uh, build models ensemble models very easily um, and you have a more, let's say, you have more algorithms to choose from. So you can, let's say, um, build a more complex model in NIME and then convert that into PMML and run the prediction part then on the remote side. Or, so this part here at the bottom is uh, the, the mass prediction. This is then run on, uh, in the cluster. So closing the loop, if you, if you look at NIME and Spark, um, what NIME is very good at is to build, um, let's say, more complex models or that are more, yeah, more complex models or more, more advanced models. Uh, Spark on the other side is more to build models on, on large scale. And then once you have built the model, you can choose whether you want to run, deploy your model on, on the remote side in Spark or in, in NIME. And then, of course, you can also mix and match. I think I have an, maybe I should go into the demo part. Uh, the motivation of the slide is that you can, for instance, do parameter optimization or, uh, let's say, uh, also feature selection on um, modeled in a NIME workflow, but then actually done in a Spark cluster. Um, I, I claim that you is all visual and you just drag and drop together nodes. That means 10 minutes, <laughs> okay. Um, so that you can uh, drag and drop all the nodes and all your functions and you can sort of do it all visually without remembering a single line of code. Um, sometimes that's not quite possible if you want to reach out to R or Python. Um, same for, for the Spark integration, if you want to do more advanced stuff, then there's something called here in Spark Java snippet node where you then have access to the, um, to the RDC di RDD directly and then you can code your own uh, code. There are a couple nodes available, something like around uh, 50 different nodes that allow you to access Spark and run Spark MLlib algorithms in, in NIME. And then the big data architecture, how this usually looks like at the client side is that you have your data scientist or the guy who, let's say the expert, who knows how stuff is set up, sitting at his desk, designing a workflow. Um, he's the, here at the bottom left side, so he's designing one of those workflows that, that does something. Then he can upload this to what's then called the NIME server, so one of these commercial products that we have. And um, from there, it can be, uh, for instance, automatically hit via an API call, via REST call. There's also an extension available that makes available a simplified web interface uh, on top of a workflow, so where the business user then doesn't know what, what the NIME workflow is. So he's just choosing a, different, a couple different input parameters and taking through the analysis. And then when he executes it, it's all happening on the remote side. Um, here's a small example that I can show um, is uh, 
yeah, it's an example that we ran as part of one of our white papers where we were analyzing the uh, forecast data of these energy meters somewhere in Ireland. So they had um, recorded the, the usage pattern of different households over the week and over the years, et cetera, and tried to identify the patterns. Um, and then there are different steps, like simple data pre-processing, getting the data into the right shape, then building a simple model, building a more advanced model, building ensembles, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, this is the workflow, and this is now where I can also switch to nine, the nine platforms. So this is the, um, the desktop application that you can download just from nine.org. It's just a big archive extracted and then executed. It comes with everything that's needed. It's written in Java. It's based on Eclipse. This is what it looks like. Um, maybe as a quick intro here. I can also actually, can, no, I have the time. Uh, here's one simple example where we are doing uh, sentiment classification on IMDB data, so people making notes on different video, um, um, movies, and this was then recorded in the data set, and this is now read in here using this file reader, so this is, this is one of those notes that you can configure, and then you point it to the file that you want to read, and then you have different columns in here. This is actually quite long columns. Then you execute it, and then you get the same data here. And then you enter one of these meta nodes. So these meta nodes actually hide a lot of complexity. I can enter into it. This is actually a simple one. This is probably a more advanced one. We have something like nodes that are called back of words creator, term to string, term frequency, ngram creator. So this is all, that's the text processing extension. It's also open source and uh, available here in the um, in the node repository. So there is a lot of pre-processing going on to get the data, the reviews into the right shape and stemming and stop word filtering, et cetera, et cetera. You do some category to class. Um, let's randomly look at this data set here. Again, one column and if I scroll further to the right, I have uh, my document vector that I can then feed into an algorithm. There's also a compact representation available, but this is here what it is. So you have your, your, your data set, and then you can uh, do here, I just randomly chose an R algorithm. Uh, that's actually quite simple. So that's the R integration where I can interactively explore my, uh, my data set and or run my, my R script on the data set. Um, so you do the learning and prediction and then eventually do feed this all into a scorer and you come up some, with some numbers that mean something to you or not. So something like 70% accuracy on this data set. Whatever that actually means is, is meaningless here. Back to our little energy data set. Uh, it's not quite small, but um, still enough to run on the Spark installation on my uh, machine here. So this is, again, uh, the workflow, and let's look at one of these meta nodes. It's called pre-processing in Hive. And here you have all the connectivity. Connect your data, uh, connect to your database, get the data in, uh, let's randomly open this one. So this is just uh, choose the energy sample data set, and then you do some further querying, some joining, so in the database join, if you are familiar with SQL. Uh, you know that these things are quite complex to write, uh, join, but this is all visual. So you sort of say, okay, I want to have this column here joined with that particular column from the other data, um, data set or table in, in my database. Um, then I do some further querying, et cetera, a database group by, so that's a group, um, group by keyword in SQL is, again, visual, very simple to do, and then I end up with this let's say a simplified uh, table, which is still in Hive. So if I execute this workflow, it's not running on my local machine. In fact, here it's running in my local machine, but if I had a real Spark cluster that is more than my machine here, Hadoop system, then it would run on the remote side. So that's not done here in the Nime Analytics platform. And then you do some pre-processing with Spark. So you take your, your tables in here. Actually, you can look also at one of those tables 
can, that's also one of the beauties of NIME. You can always kind of debug what you are doing and look at the intermediate results. So this is now executing uh, the stuff in Spark um, and then fetching the first, the top 100 rows from the data frame in Spark. And then I can see my meter IDs and then energy consumption for Monday, Tuesday, etc. So all the statistics that I want to aggregate. And then I can do stuff like um, missing value handling in Spark, uh, Spark column filtering. There are some control nodes that allow me to persist my, let's say, my, my view of, of Spark. It's called then persist Spark RDD. Um, here, the next meta node will take my, my data set and then do some analytics. So there's some node called Spark K-means, which runs K-means clustering algorithm on Spark, whereby this is now put in a loop. So NIME has this notion of, of loops. There's a node called table row to variable loop start and a loop end node. And once I execute it, it will, yeah, um, it will run all, this, all of this uh, again. Actually, I can, should be able to also run this. So if I run this, you will see this is now uh, doing a parameter scan over a number of different K parameters. This is my parameter table. I see I want to write 10, 11, 12 numbers of clusters. Then I make uh, record the the uh, accuracy or let's say the entropy of my clustering result, and then I can um, um, record this. Okay. Um, yeah, and then there is a bit more going on when you want to. Uh, this is actually not that interesting, but if you wanted to, once you have your um, analysis done in Spark and you have, let's say, a reasonable result and a small result that is able to fit into, onto, that your local machine can handle, then you can also get your data uh, into NIME and do all your further analysis in the NIME analytics platform. By the way, the, the, also the NIME isn't operating off main memory, but there's also some smart caching uh, going on that when your data gets too large, it swaps out to disk. But it's still running on, on your local machine. But still, it's no problem to handle few millions or we are also had customers running this on billions of rows, but it's not made for, let's say, terabyte of data. Um, yeah. So once you've done with your Spark analysis, you can get your Spark. Also, there's a node, for instance, called Spark to Table that will sort of uh, uh, materialize your Spark RDD into a NIME table, and then yet you get your NIME table and uh, can do further analysis, like you can build an ARIMA model here. Um, this is all quite, quite advanced. Um, okay, so I now took liberty to skip over most of those slides. Let me come to the end. Um, Maybe one more comment in terms of how we integrate with Spark. We are using Spark, uh, what's called uh, an Apache project called Spark, uh, Spark Job Server that has um, that offers a nice REST interface and that we use to submit our um, our jobs. So there's also some UI going on. Um, um, yeah, and that completes my presentation here. So what I focused on here is just the integration of Hadoop systems like the big data extensions and Spark. Um, there's much more to explore when you are completely new to NIME. Uh, maybe one question, who of you has heard of NIME? Okay, that's not quite, no, quite a half. Um, so there's much more to explore. If you're completely new to NIME, go to NIME.org, uh, download it and, and poke around. There are nice examples available also. And again, if you want to have um, this free code to get that ebook, uh, just check it out. That completes my talk. Thanks for the attention. Thank you.